Hello, children everywhere. Hello, mums and dads. Oh, and if I'm not mistaken, there's a few queens out there watching too. Welcome, your majesties. I bow to you. Today, on Watch with Roger, I'm going to unbox this mysterious black package. What exciting things could lay inside of the shrink wrap? Shall we have a look? I think we shall. Well, here it is, children. A lovely little box. And it's marked Hoover. Somebody has written Hoover on the box. Here they near what's inside. So, do you think in this tiny little box there is a Hoover? Or is the title of this YouTube video just a ruse to get, to get you to watch? I may be opening something other than a Hoover does get. Whoa! The power compels you. Oh! Can't, I can't be keeping up with this. This is how I, this is how I really speak. I'm not, I'm not posh at all. I put it on, you know. I'm as common as mook. I was brought up in a back-to-back -back with an outside privy. Yeah, we didn't have a car or a colour television set until I was 35. No, actually, no, I, I'm, I'm wrong. In fact, I've had a very privileged upbringing. In fact, I have you know, children, it's commonplace now, but believe you me, in the early 70s, when I was a nipper, to have a dishwasher was, well, you were seen as royalty. We had a dishwasher and a B-Day, can you believe it? And two cars, two German cars. So, honestly, let's get on with this anyway. Put my normal voice on for you. This is another eBay find. It is supposed to be N in B, new in box. It doesn't have a plug on it. So in this video, I'll be showing you how we wire a plug because some of you watching will never have had to wire a plug onto an appliance in your life. Now then, here we have a black bag which we could possibly reuse. Thinking of the environment, ah! It's like, pass the parcel. No, I wasn't expecting that. A mm, little bit musty. I'm not sure if this person smokes. Well, whatever was in this box, it says Mega Stretch High Performance Stretch Film. Ooh. Well, hopefully I haven't got a box of high performance stretch film because that's not what I ordered. It's not the auction I won on eBay. Hopefully, now I've had one of these, of course, I've owned one of these for new and then sold it, regretted selling it, and then one pops up on eBay, and I'm thinking, ooh, I'll have that, I'll have a bit of that, here we go. It is a Hoover Dustette. This is the first of the restyled Dustettes, the all plastic Dustette that was launched in, I believe, 1984 this one came out, because I do have a leaflet which is uh, entitled New for 84. It features the Power Plus uprights, plus on the back, this Hoover Dustette. And this Hoover Dustette was made in Hong Kong, and later variants of this, I believe, were made in Britain, I assume at the Canvas Lang factory in Scotland, and they came in a sort of a grey, a grey and lilac, I think the colour was. Carmagu grey or something? But anyway, this is a brown colour. So here we have it. Oh, look! A Hoover Dust It. Wonderful little machine. Here's the box. There is a lady, I assume it's a lady, let me just have a look. Yes, well, it's a lady or a transvestite, I'm not sure, but she's got lovely painted nails and she's just uh, going over her Draylon curtain. And as you can see, this isn't cordless, 
it's connected to that wall socket there, plugged in. What else have we got to see? Nothing apart from, on the other side, I'm assuming, I don't know. No, it is. I, now, this is women's lib for you. I thought, because we're seeing the dustette vacuuming a car, I assumed it would be the man, because the man vacuums the car, doesn't he? But no, if you look very closely at the fingernails, they are painted. But of course, we can't see any other part of this person. So it could be a man who likes to put nail varnish on and vacuum his car. Any of you car enthusiasts out there, do you know what car that is just from the upholstery and the steering wheel? If you do know, please comment. It'll be interesting for us all, I'm sure. I'll see if I can, well, I can't see, but it's got, uh, well, I don't know what that is. It's awful, but anyway. Shall we open it? Ooh. Now I could, I could say that this is the first time this has been out of its box since it was packed at the factory in Hong Kong, but no, it has been out of the box because it was shown out of the box on the eBay pictures. Now I don't think it says Hong Kong on the box. All we've got on the box is the model S1122, on that little sticker. And it says 240 volts. I'm just going to put my noggin in here and have a bit of a whiff. No, nothing. Okay, let's have a look. The first thing we're going to take out is the guarantee registration postcard. I need to send that to 20 Wadsworth Road, Perivale, Greenford. I've actually been to the Hoover building in Perivale in Greenford, Middlesex, London, but I actually visited that place when it was still Hoover's head office. They weren't manufacturing there, but they still had their marketing and other departments there. And I actually paid a visit when I was still at school. I went for a day trip and had a look round. It's something I'll uh, Remember for all my lifetime. But anyway, I've been there. Well, I don't know about Wadsworth Road. I've been on the Great Great Western Road where the Hoover Building is located. Unfortunately, it's now a Tesco. Well, half of it's a Tesco at the back. But it still looks the same, apart from instead of saying Hoover Limited, it says Hoover Building. It all seems fine so far. Here's the instruction manual. Hoover Dustnet Cleaner from Hoover Who Better. Hoover PLC, Perivale, Greenford, Middlesex. Ooh, this particular leaflet was printed in Japan. But I'm pretty sure the machine's made in Hong Kong. This is something I would have loved to have got hold of again. It really increases the versatility of the dust set, is this set of cleaning tools. That would have been fantastic to go with this machine. I believe I had them when, of course, back in the day, when I was a mere slip of a thing, I would have had the tools, I'm sure. But there we go, it's just showing you the uh, assembly. It's basically putting the bag in and, and clicking the cloth bag onto the back of the cleaner. It tells you about the plug. Uh, connecting plug to mains lead and they're saying to put a 3 amp fuse in it if you're using a regular 13 amp plug. I think the plug I've got to hand has a 3 amp fuse, so I'm okay. I believe it's only about 150 watts, this little vacuum. 150, 170, something like that. I will, of course, confirm or deny that when I have a look at the rating plate. Here we have two genuine Hoover Dustet dust bags, single walled paper, the very early dust sets. In fact, I've got one of the very early dust sets, and I've also got a slightly later dust set. I believe both of those used a cloth shakeout bag, but some of the later metal bodied dust sets you could put a paper bag, and they fitted on in a similar way to they fitted onto the junior and senior with a with a rubber or sometimes a metally springy collar thing. This fits on with a a rubber band as well. I'll show you all that, of course. 
Of course, of course I will. Now, let's have a look. Here is a little bit creased up, but not too bad, but definitely, definitely brand new. Yep. Here is the rather fetching brown outer dust bag in a sort of a white clean finish. And inside there is the bag support tube, I suppose you could call that, or the bag collar. And here is a little rubber band which you fit the bag to. There's nothing to stop a rebel, of course, a rebel using this without the dust bag, but it it would make it rather messy to empty, wouldn't it? But I don't like to be a rebel, not when it comes to vacuum cleaners. I like to do things by the book. I like to use genuine bags, genuine spares, etc. So, this is all coming back to me. Let's just pop it down there. Locate the bag in one minute. Locate the bag collar on here. Still getting over a little bit of a cold, depending on when I've uploaded this. I won't have a cold at the time you see this, of course. Hopefully not, anyway. So, <clears throat> I've lost the cough, though. A couple of my videos of late have been a little bit spoilt by me having to pause them to cough. Oh, come on. Honestly. It's, you see, it's trying to do things back to front. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing, and I'm try to, trying to do it, and I'm just going to have to um, sort of do this. No, it's not, it's not going to work. Anyway, basically, you feed the bag onto this collar here, get it on tight, and then you roll the little rubber ring or belt onto... That's not, that's not exactly... Oh, that's not properly done. Hang on a minute. Yeah, well, that'll, that'll, do for the, that'll do for the purposes of the video anyway, so I've got that on and then it fits back inside. So I suppose it's like a double layer filter. You've got the bag which is your first filter and I suppose the cloth material on the outer bag will act as a further filter. So there's that. Next thing to come out of the box is the all-purpose nozzle with Hoover's pip fitting design. Quite a nice little nozzle. So that's basically the standard nozzle you get supplied. You can fit, if you've got other Hoover cleaners, I'm sure you can fit other Hoover nozzles to this. And of course, this will do your stairs, your upholstery, your curtains, your car, everywhere. It's a shame it didn't really, it would have been good if it came with a crevice nozzle as standard because a crevice nozzle is the second most useful nozzle, I believe, to the all-purpose. But that'll do most jobs. Your all-purpose brush, or nozzle, not a brush, it's a nozzle. Right, I think, I think we can take out the cleaner. One thing that I think is missing from this, oh dear. Well, it has suffered, I'm afraid, it's suffered a little bit of... It's suffered a... I mean, it'll polish out. I've got some um, car polish. There is a little bit of box wear from it's rubbed up, rubbed up in something and... Uh, but I think with a bit of polish that will cover up. It is... Yes, it looks, yes, definitely unused. There's no, there's no hint of any dirt inside. Now, I don't know if we can pick this up on the camera. Can you just about see inside there is a fan? So this is a dirty fan cleaner. So all the dirt you pick up passes straight through that fan, through the body of the machine. I think it goes through the handle, actually. So the dirt comes through here and through the handle and out of there into the bag. So it's, I think it's quite powerful as far as I remember because you haven't got very far, have you, for the dirt to travel before it's, it's got to the fan. 
but you do have to be careful with this sort of machine that you don't pick up any hard or sharp objects because they could damage the fan and this fan is, is a plastic sort of fan similar sort of thing you'd get on the later Hoover Junior I would have thought it's one thing I think that is missing from the flex you would normally have had a little paper um, I don't know what you'd call them a little thingy majig that uh, would, uh, would give you instructions on how to wire the plug and that looks a little bit uh, bedraggled so there we have the blue and the brown wire brown for live blue for neutral so I do have to find a plug to fit that on and this machine is obviously double insulated because there's no earth wire needed I think it's a fairly long flex, I'm not sure how long, but should hopefully be long enough to go up the stairs. I'm not sure though, should do, as long as the socket's near the uh, bottom of the stairs. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. I can't pause now, I'm too far away from the camera. So, there we have it. Ah, here is the rating plate. I can't see that at the moment, hopefully you can read what that says, I'm going to have a look at it in a minute, there you go, digest, it says Hoover model S1122, yes 150 watts I thought it was, that square within a square is a double insulated symbol, the serial number is 4081567, not sure if we can date it from that, trademarks of Hoover PLC made in Hong Kong I thought so, for Hoover PLC. So yes, it just has a little bit of scuffing, slight scuffing on the uh, side there. But I do think a bit of polish will disguise that nicely. If you see where the nozzle fits on, there's a little cutout there. So it's you put put the nozzle in that way, but then you turn it and it locks it into position and to put the bag in place we have to locate this little lip it's a little lip at the bottom of the bag and at the bottom of the back of the cleaner there's a little slot so you pop the lip into the slot push at the top here until it clicks and there we have it all ready to go well nearly all ready to go apart from I need to fit a plug so I'm going to do that just in a moment and I'll show you fitting it I did have a request from a viewer wanting to see me fitting a plug I think it was on the Aquamaster but I'd already fitted it but I can show you how to fit a plug on this video if you're interested some of you might be so here we are there's a little on off switch at the side it's a nice little nice little cleaner isn't it I think these retailed, I can't remember, I think it was about, I'm thinking $29.99 or $39.99, I'm not sure. They were certainly not cheap, but then again, you know, you got what you paid for. Things, things in general are cheaper nowadays. But although it's the modern style, all plastic dust dead, it does, it does share at some of the design elements of the original dust set. It's the exact same layout with the nozzle at the front, the fan here, motor here, and the bag here. Just like on their upright cleaners, they didn't change them much over the years. They just updated the styling and that's exactly what they've done with the dust set. They've kept the basic principles of the design, but modernized it for the modern woman of the 80s. The modern woman of the 80s would have had this vacuum cleaner to supplement her main upright or cylinder. And back in the day when this was a current model, I don't think we had very, very much in the line, way of uh, bagless cleaners. Bagless didn't come into the market until the 90s. So the housewives of the 80s had bags. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm going to focus now on this bare main seat because you want to hear it going don't you and without a plug on that we're not going to hear anything and hopefully it's going to be working fine I remember what this sounds like 
when it was new, so it looks okay. I think it'll be fine. Anyway, I'm going to get a plug for this and we'll fit it on and then we'll switch on this vintage 1980s dustette. Well, this is a typical British plug. The innards of a typical British plug. It's not brand new, it's been uh, cut off something else uh, to go in the bin. I think it was off a lamp. So it's not not really one I'd, I'd really want to put on this stuff set. I might get myself a nice new plug. But anyway, it's enough for me to show you the demonstration. So in a UK plug you've got three pins. The longer one is the earth pin. This pin is neutral, this pin is live. Now the safe thing about UK plugs, the earth pin's longer because when you put it into the socket it opens up two little covers that normally cover the live and neutral openings. It's just a little safety feature to stop children poking things into them. So they only open up when you put the plug in and of course it's the longer earth pin that actually opens up the two little shutters. You've also got insulated earth and neutral pins. I have had the odd shock in the past. In the days before the pins had to be insulated, I was once uh, fiddling about trying to find a socket under the bed and I was in this sort of position, this is when I was a kid, and sort of fumbling about putting it into the socket, obviously. <laughs> I had my fingers in the way and I got a bit of a shock. I've also had a shock off a Hoover Dustette but not an all plastic one, it was uh, an earlier model. But nothing, nothing too bad and those little shocks taught me to be careful with electricity. This has got a cord grip which is a, a good design. In, um, some of the plugs you can get have a cord grip that you fix with two screws and it sort of tightens down. They can work loose in time this has um, a clamp system, so I've put the cable in, which will hold the cable in place, but the more you tug on the cable, the tighter it is. So it's quite a good safe design, because sometimes if people have wired a plug wrong, and they hadn't tightened the cable clamp, you can be pulling away, especially in a vacuum cleaner, you might have tug at the cable, and you find you might have loosened a wire, and you can get a shock. So that's quite a good safety feature. This area here is where the fuse goes. Now this is a 3 amp fuse, so hopefully it hasn't blown. That fits in there. This is the live terminal, this is the neutral. Because it's double insulated, I don't have to connect the wire to the earth terminal. The earth wire would be green and yellow, unless it's an old appliance. A modern appliance it would be green and yellow. So I've already cut, you need to cut the wires to fit the plug. So, I will just, first of all, bend over the exposed wire. I've twisted it round, and I bet you bend them over, so now, they're not, as, they're not straggly like they were when I opened it, they're quite neat now, and I need to put the first wire, the neutral wire, let's just move that out of the way, make it easier. I'll just insert the neutral wire into the terminal and there's a little screw on the top. Oops. I'll screw that down. Making sure it grips You don't want to over tighten, but you do, you still want it secure, but not overly tight. And also, you don't want any straggly bits of wire showing. So, the screw there is actually holding the exposed wire in that terminal. Just need to do the same thing now, but with the live terminal. It's difficult to do and show you, but uh, there we go. Push that into there. Mm, I might have slightly 
misjudged the length of that, but let me just pull that down a bit and that'll do it. Hang on a minute, let's tuck that in, that'll be, it'll be fine for now. <laughs> just I'll screw that up now. And then I can pop the fuse in. Won't work without the fuse. Or if the fuse is blown, it won't work, it cuts off the power. And then I can pop the live pin back. So there we go. There's the wire to the live and the wire to the neutral. And the outer insulation, the black insulation, is pushed into this clamp. So I can tug on that and it's not going to come loose. Last thing to do, we need to put the cover on the plug. Now one thing that I did quite often, and this might ring a few bells with some of, some of my more mature viewers, but there was a type of plug, and it, actually any of you who know and watch One Foot in the Grave, Victor Meldrew, he's done this. It's obviously something very common. There was one type of rubberized plug that you had to feed the cable through the cover first because it was sort of enclosed. So you had to push it through the cover, then wire it up, then push, uh, connect the cover to the, the pins. So often you would wire the plug up, then you'd come to screw, screw the cover on and you'd realise, oh, I can't put it on because it needs to be fairly, oh. It happened a couple of times to me, but not that often. You do it once or twice and hopefully you don't do it again. But anyway, there we go, that's the plug fitted. So now we're all ready to switch on the Hoover Dustette. Well, I've made a little bit of a mess, not much, but uh, I've cut some paper up and sprinkled a bit of couscous on the table just to give you a brief quick demo. Hopefully it's going to work. I, I actually haven't switched this on. I haven't turned it on before videoing this. So the first time I turn this on is the first time. When you see it is the first time I'm going to see it. So let's hope. I have no reason to think it won't work. Let's hope it does. Just going to turn it on first before attempting to clear this mess up. Don't blow up on me. No, that sounds as it should. I've got the whiff of a new electric motor. So, let's see if little Dusty will be able to clean all this mess up. Might make a bit of noise with the couscous. Of course, being a dirty fan, I forgot about that when I put the couscous down. It's going to go through the fan before it gets to the bag. But anyway, let's see. Well, that is good. A lot better than the Hoover Click. That was a disaster. But of course, this is mains powered. And until battery technology improves, mains power is still more powerful for handheld vacuums. I've just seen a few little spots that we didn't get. Ah, it's lovely. And to empty the bag, there's another little button on the side here. Press that in. Press that in. <laughs> Press that in. Where is Prestat in? I think it's in Wales, isn't it? I don't think I've ever been to Wales. I can't get over the fact that they burnt our cottages. Every time I'm, I'm asked, oh look, there's this, there's this hotel in Wales. I say, no, they hate the English. I'm sure any Welsh people watching, I'm sure you all don't hate the English. It's just what I feel. Now, we could possibly tip this out, a lot of this, again, through through the hole. There we go. We've got another pile. Um, it's really a lovely little cleaner. But it would be even lovelier if I had the toolkit 
that went with it. It would really increase the versatility of this Hoover dust set. Okay, before I go, one last shot. I'm going to take the nozzle off and then we'll suck it up without the nozzle on and we'll do a little bit of a close-up shot for you. That'll be the final thing you see on this video. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and you'll be updated every time I upload a new floor care video, which at the moment is three times a week. Always on a Friday at 5pm UK time, there will be a brand new video from me. Sometimes on a Monday at 5pm now will be a new video from me. And on a Wednesday, you get a break from me and normally it's uh, a home shopping demo, QBC or something like that. But it's all vacuum related, although of course I am going to start introducing a few other appliances to the channel. But if it's vacuums you're after, tune in on Fridays at 5 and uh, you'll see some vacuum cleaners. So, for me and Dusty the Dustette, it's goodbye and I'll leave the last shot to Dusty cleaning all this mess up.